time I sit down to do a video, every time I press record on the camera, there's helicopters, aeroplanes, the guy next door with his chainsaw. Anyway, hey guys, I wanted to hang out with you today and I wanna to talk about handbags. I'm talking about sort of two aspects. The first is, some of you have noticed I'm getting so many questions because I put up for sale on my Depop account, was it last month? Maybe I started doing it in February, I can't remember. But I put some of my bags up for sale and loads of you are going like, why have you done that? Plus as well, like with some of the bags that I sold in particular, or in fact just one, I've had loads of you going like, why have you chosen to sell it? So I'm gonna talk about that. Then I'm gonna talk about the bags that I'm looking to buy currently. Anyway, back in February, pretty sure it was February, I started selling quite a few of my bags. The whole reason for this was when David and I moved house back in October 2015, I just couldn't believe how much stuff I had from the old house that it was like mainly clothes and shoes, but it was things that I hadn't worn in ages and that if I put my hand on my heart, I knew I was never gonna wear them again. So a lot of the stuff I gave to charity and then other stuff I kept back because I wanted to be able to sell it at current in the spare room as has been there from the day we moved in is just like clothes rail upon clothes rail of clothes. The bags really were part of that because I've got like an area in my house where I keep my bags and I was really noticing that whenever I went to rotate my bag or just get a new one out because I had a different requirement or need for the bag, there was like a whole row on this shelf, there was like a whole row of bags along the bottom that I never used. I never even thought about them. Part of my decluttering thing, I just thought, oh, I'm gonna get rid of them. So that's what I did. I actually did that handbag tag in February and one of the questions was how many bags have you got? And I thought I probably had about 10 or 12, which seemed a lot, but then I realized I had 21, I think. And it just seemed crazy, particularly because there were some there that I don't use. I'm just gonna go on my Depop because I can't remember what I sold now. I basically ended up putting five of the 21 for sale. The first bag that I put for sale, and I need to talk about this because of those of you asking me why I put it for sale, but also because even to this day, this morning, I got an email from a lady in Spain pleading with me, like begging me to sell her this bag and I'm really sorry, but it sold a while ago. So this is it. This is the iridescent purple Chanel Boy from the 2016 Cruise Collection. From the day I bought this bag, I never anticipated using it. That's not why I bought it. I bought it at the time because I genuinely felt like it was gonna be an investment piece and it absolutely was in the end. It was something that I had in my closet and for the time that I owned it, I enjoyed going to have a look at it every so often. But actually, although it was beautiful and it was sort of like a piece of art, I know that sounds really like over the top, but honestly, that bag was so beautiful in real life. The color of it, because it was this iridescent purpley green, sort of like a petroly color, that would have been really hard to wear. Like if I'd actually thought about wearing that bag, I don't know what I'd have worn with it because the colorway of it was quite sort of like edgy. I'm so glad with the home that it went to. I was packing this bag up on the evening before UPS were gonna collect it, right? So I was packaging this bag up and I really felt genuinely, like I actually felt really upset. Because as I was looking at this bag, I thought this is gonna be the last time that I ever see it. When I went to bed that night, I was even having like really stressful dreams about it. I know that sounds really silly, but most of the time with the bags that I buy, they're like an emotional purchase in that it takes you time to save up for them. And it's not something you just walk in and just buy something. It's like, it's a real, it's a real thing that you think about. And so I never just flippantly sell something and don't think twice about it. Even the bags that I've sold, I still think about them from time to time. The next bag that I wanted to sell was the Chanel GST. It was a smaller size. It's an antique bronze. It's actually gonna get sent out tomorrow. But the reason why I decided to sell it was I bought it in 2012 and I don't think I've used it since 2015. It was a bag that I went through a phase of using a lot. Then I sold the Dior Soft Tote, a beautiful bag, one that I bought in 2013. I used to use that bag all the time, like every day when I worked in an office because I could fit an A4 pad in it plus my 13 inch MacBook Pro. It was a great bag for meetings and commuting and the leather on it was so hard wearing, it was a really good bag. But when I quit my job in 2015, I, ne I never used it since. Even now when I go out to meetings or like, I try where possible, it's like my 2017 thing, but 
I'm trying to get away from my home desk because it was driving me insane. So like one or two days a week, I go and work with a friend of mine and we work in this like rented office space. But even when I go there, I was never using that bag. I was just carrying my laptop like under my arm and just taking my regular handbag. So I just thought I'm not gonna use it, let it go. And it that again has gone to someone lovely who's loving that bag. So I'm really pleased about that. I've only got two left that are still for sale. These are the two in question, the Miu Miu Vitello Lux and the Gucci Boston bag. This I've just not, I've not even used this. The reason why I decided to sell this is because I've already got another Gucci Boston bag that I actually use quite a lot, but I never felt, I never wanted to use this because at the time, you know when something's new and you're like, I don't want to use it because I don't want to ruin it. And then this one, I've spoken about this before. I bought this in 2012. I can't see myself using it again. So they're the only two that I've got for sale still. And I do have those of you messaging me saying, are you gonna be selling anymore? At the moment, I don't plan to, but if I do, I'll let you know. Now for bags that I'm looking at buying. There are four in total. Two out of the four, I think I probably will get. One definitely. One of them I'm actually gonna get tomorrow. It is on my list. I'm very excited about it. I've actually been thinking about it for the last few days. Here's the thing. So on Monday, David and I go up to London. We're just like having a wander around Harrod. Of these four bags, I put it up on Twitter and I was like, what do you guys think? The first one is the Louis Vuitton Matisse or Pochette Matisse in the Emperant leather. The second one is also from Louis Vuitton. It is the Neo Noé. And then the other two are both from Dior. There's the Diorissimo and the Dior Ever. If you had said to me six months ago that I'd be looking at these bags, I would be like, no way. Like. They are bags that have definitely grown on me. Then I looked at the Dior Ever. I have always sort of had it in the back of my mind that I'd wanna get it in black with either silver hardware or the champagne gold hardware. I looked at it on Monday in both different color options, like the in terms of metals. And I think that I wanna go for it in the silver, but the reason why I didn't get it is because I've got a friend who works at Dior at Harrods. She was like, let me get it for you in the gray so that you can compare it. And the gray one arrives tomorrow, which is Thursday. So I'm gonna go and take a look at it and, and see which one I like, even though I think I'm probably gonna get the black. It's just such a nice bag and the medium is actually a really nice size. I did look at the mini, but the mini's like this big. It's really, really tiny. I don't feel like I could do much with it. It does look like it's trying to be a Birkin in all honesty, but whatever, it's nice. Diorissimo, I looked at it and immediately I was able to rule it out. I was looking at it in the mini size and in the medium. The reason why I decided no in the end is on this picture, it looks really structured. But when I looked at that bag, Apparently it's designed like this on purpose, but the leather across the top of the bag is all like wrinkly. It's it's like not straight. It looks like it looks like the leather's got wet and has then dried out and is shrunk back and it's gone all like crinkled. And apparently that's part of the design. Apparently it's designed to look like the hem of a dress, like a gown. And as the dress moves, like the fabric or whatever, it's meant to look like that. It doesn't, in my opinion. It just looks broken a bit. So I have not considered that any longer. The Matisse is a bag that I can't believe I'm looking at. Don't want to offend anyone, but when that bag came out in the monogram, I couldn't stand it and I still don't like it now. I don't like the monogram anyway. If it was in the Abine, I might have had a different opinion about it. But the other reason why I didn't like it is because it's one of those bags that has been absolutely played out across social media. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but because I buy things hoping that I can sell them for more money, I'm really skeptical about these social media trend bags, I'm gonna call them, because I've seen so many bags that have been hyped, 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 and then the trend dies and no one wants them. You know, I wanna be smart with the money that I spend. I don't just wanna go and spend a load of money on something that I actually don't think is gonna be good in the long run. But when that bag came out in the Emperant, I don't know, I just saw it. I saw it in the pink first. Even if that ends up being a dud in terms of long-term profitability, it's one of those bags that I don't care. Like, when I bought the Christian Louboutin Paloma tote, that's a bag that I love. And I know loads of you were like, that bag is gross. That's fine, that's your opinion. 
I love that bag. Do I think it's gonna make me anywhere near what I paid for it? No, I don't. But it's not a bag that I intend on ever selling. I love the way it looks. It's so edgy, it's so different. And with the pochette in the Emperance leather, that's another bag that I feel this way about, that I'm buying it more because I like it. But the one thing that's holding me back is so many of you are telling me that the quality on that bag is really bad, particularly in that leather. And I had actually one lady who said to me she'd had three of them and she kept sending them back because the leather kept cracking. So yeah, so tomorrow I'm quite excited about tomorrow. I feel like I have really thought about this bag for a long time and this is how I know it's right. I'll go and look at it. If I really like it, I won't necessarily, unless it's like in an unusual color and they haven't got many left. What I try and do is I try and just leave it for as long as possible. And then if I'm still thinking about it, then I know it's the right thing. David's been worse than me. He's like, you should have just got that bag on Monday. It's really nice. And I'm like, yeah, but I want to see it in the gray. And also it's quite good just to delay it and just make sure that you definitely do like it and you're still thinking of it. It's not that it's even a particularly fancy bag in terms of its design or style but I like the idea of having something that is open across the top, that is in a black color that I don't have to worry about getting marked. I can just use it and enjoy it. That's one thing that I'm looking forward to with it. So that is what I'm selling and what I'm thinking of buying. I hope you've enjoyed this. I'm gonna link to everything below, including what I'm wearing, my lipstick, my makeup, um, just everything is gonna be listed below. Thanks for hanging out and I will see you in the next video.